Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over AWS. I want to show you how to do make your own lab at home using AWS for free. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos or desktop support videos all about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live, all right? So let me share my screen with you and I'll show you exactly step by step how you can get started with AWS and how to make your own lab at home. Why am I going over this? It's because you may need to know AWS. You may be required to do it in your job. And also, it's good to, on your resume. So if you want to learn AWS, you can learn for free by creating your own account. So let me share my screen with you. So this is how it looks like. It's AWS Management Console. Um, just for the sake of the video, let me sign out and sign back in. So you do log back in. You want to log in as the root user. So the, you, you basically create a new AWS account. Um, it says it's free for 12 months, free tier access. So, and I'm going to show you which one's the free one. So you could actually do it on your own if that makes sense. So you're going to hit next and you just log in with whatever password you create, obviously. Now I'm fully logged in and I'm going to show you how to build your own server and how to set up Active Directory on that server using AWS. All right. Should be a simple video today. So what you do is um, launch a virtual machine. Um, you want to pick the free one. So this is free tier, eligible, free tier, eligible. Those are all the free ones. I want to pick up the other ones because they're going to charge you on that. So don't try to avoid those other ones. So this is this is the one that I want to get. Microsoft Server 2016 based with containers. I mean, 2016 is down here as well. That's entirely up to you whether you want to use 2016 or 2019. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. So there's your own little lab right here. So then when you do this, you hit select. And then... You want to pick the, the free tier legible one and you hit you could configure it too obviously if you want up to you this is right here the configuration um, create a new directory you could do that if you want with Microsoft entirely up to you which which is not what I'm doing today um, you could change a bunch of stuff here too obviously so I'm not doing that I'm not doing that I'm just gonna I'm just going to go with the regular. I'm going to go with the basics. I don't want to confuse you guys. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do select, um, review, and launch. It's going to be the one gig one. And then we're going to hit uh, launch. So now it's going to ask you for a, a, an existing pair, a key pair, or create a new one. So what the, what does that mean? That doesn't make any sense. So a key pair consists of a, a public key that AWS stores as a private key to your store. So you connect these things together and it allows you to actually connect to the VM. I already have a pair or, or, or a key pair. I'm going to make a brand new one so you guys don't get confused if that makes sense. So I'm going to make a new pair, create a new one, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's just call it for the video, let's call it a lab. Uh, I'm going to download it and then I'm going to, I'm going to put that file called lab, I'm going to put it on my desktop. So I'm going to drag it to my desktop so I don't get confused. I'm just going to close out of that. Then I'm going to hit launch instances. So then when I do that, it's going to actually create that, that instance for you. So you do view instances right here on the right-hand side. You see I created two already because I was just playing around with it. Um, and then um, just let it create itself. Just, just, you know, just be patient with it. So this does take about four or five minutes for it to create. So you got to have patience with it. Um, the instance or the, the key is very important. You need to have that somewhere. So make sure you keep it safe somewhere. So the lab key is right here. With this lab key, it should allow you to authenticate and log in on that server, if that makes sense. So it says it's running, but no, it's still not still not running. You have to wait. Just give it give it a few more minutes. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to do anything. Once again, it's going to be a little slow, but it should work. It's just one gig of RAM. It's going to be a little slow, but you should be able to do everything you normally would do on server 2019 if you're using VirtualBox. Um, I tell people, like, if you know how to use Azure, you may be able to use AWS. If you know how to use AWS, you may be able to use Azure, you know, vice versa. Like, it, sh it should be, like, the same interface, if that makes sense. So it should look somewhat similar as far as connecting to VMs and stuff like that. So still working on it so um, just give it a second so if you click on it you have this thing called connect um, you have get Windows password you have launch 
launch instances, you could reboot the machine, you could create an image if you like, um, you do networking settings if you like, um, you could do editing over here, it tells you more information on it, so like if you uncheck it, there's nothing there if you check it, it tells you more information about it, like if you scroll all the way up and down, the status of it, um, the monitoring of it, um, the tags, if you want to add tags to it, and you just gotta, you gotta wait it out, so it's, it's still running. The reason why I'm waiting is because I, I, I tried it earlier and it wasn't working for me. So I'm better you're better off just, just waiting. Have patience with this. This is initializing. It's doing something. It's not like you think it's not doing anything. It is doing something. So you gotta you gotta wait it out. If you don't wait it out, it's not gonna work. Cause it's gonna it's gonna say give it four minutes or give it five minutes to actually launch. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look, literally I'll show you what I'm talking about. So um you right click on it, right? Hit connect. Um and you do Get password, right? It should let you do it now. But if you did this earlier, it's gonna give you an error message. So how do you connect to this? So what do you do? Now it's running, now it's actually working properly. So what you do is you right click on it, you hit connect. I wanna connect with a remote desktop. So you're gonna download the remote desktop app. It's gonna download on the bottom left hand side. You need a password for it, so you get, get password. And remember that file, that file or that that, that thing that, that we, we created called lab.pm? Is looking for that so you got to go into it or whatever file you create whatever name you created you click on it you hit the encrypt password it's gonna give you a bunch of letters and numbers the password is always it always changes every time you join and then you click on your remote desktop and you hit connect and then you just control V copy paste and hit connect and it should work and you hit yes and it should let you in there we go oh, that wasn't so bad right look at that if you gotta wait a couple of minutes, um, otherwise the get password option doesn't work because it was still creating the instance or still creating that VM if that makes sense. So let's give it a second. It's one gig of RAM, but it should it should get the job done if that makes sense. So just just have patience with the VM. You know the VM is it's not gonna be a hundred percent fast, but you can still play around with it. You know, so it's still loading everything. You know. You, I, how do I know it's because the, the taskbar is not there. You know, it's not. It's not 100 percent there. Oh, so you hit a yes, and it'll disconnect you temporarily, but then reconnect you. Give it a second. There we go. Whoop. There we go. Lock you back in. There we go. All right. All right. You see, there's like there's nothing here. Like the domain services are not here. Nothing set up yet. So. I click server manager. It looks exactly the same as Azure, as VirtualBox, you know, same thing. You're gonna get an error message here that you're going too fast, you know, so you're gonna hit add roles and features. They're still collecting data, it's fine, so you gotta wait. Just just let it load, it's not 100% loaded yet. It's, it's only one gig of RAM if you look at it, look at this. Show you right now. What I'm talking about. So right-click properties. Look at that one gig of RAM. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do performance. I'm gonna adjust for best performance. Like I always do. I hit OK. Let's give that a second. Hit OK. And I, I don't I don't want to have that name that just, just E C A M whatever. Just change the name of it. Obviously, when you change the name of a computer, um, you always gotta go into this PC. You right-click on this PC, you hit Properties, um, and it should let you change the name of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna change the name of it first before we, we promote domain services. I'm gonna right-click on this PC. I'm gonna hit Properties, Change Settings, Change. And I'm gonna change this to Server 2019. I'm gonna hit OK. And it's just gonna prompt me to restart. Let's give that a second. Uh, yes. Close. Restart now. Yeah. So this is, this is this weird password thing, right? Just give it a second. So now it's just restarting. Shouldn't take that long, but just give it a second. You know it works when you click on this and it lets you connect to it again. So it doesn't, it's still restarting. So just, just bear with it. I changed the name of it because I don't want that weird name. Like, uh, A-E-E-C-A, whatever. Uh, 
you know, just change the name of it, change it to whatever you want. I changed it to server 2019 because it's, you know, it's server 2019, so. Click on it again. Eventually, it should come back up. There we go. There we go, yes. I know it's a long video, I apologize for that, because I have to show people that are new how to, how to actually rename it and how to actually set up Active Directory on this because some people that are new to IT don't know how to do this. So I have to go over it step by step if that makes sense. So, server manager. Obviously it's, it's gonna be slow, it's one gig of RAM, but just, you know, just, just have patience with it, so. Still loading. So obviously, like, if you have no money, you can't afford anything. You good? I mean, I have a gaming computer. You know, you could just build your own lab with AWS for free. You do it now. You know, so you do manage. So you do manage. Um, add roles and features. Next. Basically, we're doing the same thing I normally do on every other video. Uh, next. Uh, next, you can click Active Directory Domain Services, Add Features. Uh, next, uh, next, next. You saw back, look at that. You could configure it with uh, 365 Azure Directory. Look at that. It has that option there. So, um, install. That's it. So now you're you're actually creating the domain name services on this. So easy, very easy, very easy. Nothing nothing complicated. At least I hope I hope not, you know, for 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 uh, for new for new tax, you know. Just give that a, give that a second. Obviously, if you guys get stuck somewhere on this, you know, I'm on Discord, so you could you could actually ping me on Discord. Uh, I try to be as active as I can. I, I have I'm, I'm busy myself, but um, if this doesn't work for you, let me know. Uh, you could just ping me on Discord. I'm a, I have my own Discord channel and server and everything. So, and that's below in the description in this video. So, obviously, I'll leave the AWS link below in the description as well, so you could get started and build your own lab at home. So, but if you get stuck on this, let me know. It should be self-explanatory. I hope. So you just said next, next, next. You know, just change the name of the computer. You don't want it to have a bunch of weird, you know, a bunch of weird letters and numbers or whatever. So. I changed it to server 2019. If you see right here, yep. I gotta go over this because some people don't some people don't like Azure or some people might start using AWS and you may want to start your own lab and everything. So you, after watching this video, you could add this on your resume. Now it's it's another there's another technology you could add on your resume, like AWS um, server 2019 configuration or something like that. Or, or um, uh, they ask you like, are you familiar with AWS? Yes, I do. Like, what do you what do you know about AWS? Oh, I know how to how to do um, Active Directory users and computers. I'm familiar with creating user accounts. I'm familiar with um, group policy on AWS. I'm familiar. You, know, you, you basically you're you're telling them you know what you're talking about. If that makes sense. This is another way to actually showcase your interest in IT, but also. Um, someone that is willing to learn in new technologies. So, all right. So next you do is promote the server. Um, obviously, you're adding a new forest. We're not creating. We're not creating an existing forest. You could call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it kevtech.com, like I always do. Hey, so you're creating a domain now. The, the domain controller. If that makes sense. And this is gonna be capital P, password one two three. Capital P, Astro one two three. You could change this to whatever you want. It says Windows Server twenty sixteen. It's totally fine. Next, next. Just let that, let that sink in with KevTech or whatever domain you call it. So give that a second. Next. It's absolutely free, man. I'm letting you know that uh, 
guys and girls, absolutely free. Take advantage of this if it's free. You know, take advantage of anything that's free. So, next. If it's free, it's free. Take advantage of it. So, might as well. Sure, how to do it from beginning to end because I don't want you. I don't want you guys saying I'm skipping stuff. You know, like you could see that I'm actually doing it from beginning to end. I show you. I show you what the end result is going to be. So you just just hit install and it's installing now. Obviously, you're gonna get a bunch of error messages. It's, to, it's totally fine. Don't worry about that. Don't don't don't. You know, don't be scared of that. It's totally fine. Um, AWS AWS could look very intimidating or daunting, but it's not. It's, it's just. Navigate it a little bit, you, you know, after a while you get comfortable with it and you, you could start your own lab at home and everything, so. Don't be afraid of the technology, be willing to learn it, you know, like, get comfortable with it, you know, so. So I'm showing you this video because I, I started creating this video because I, I want to show new guy, new techs um, how to actually make your own lab and, you know, get started with it, you know. So it's just it's installing now, just give it a second. Installing. I said have have patience with it. Have, have patience with AWS. I'm sorry it's a long video. It's because I have to show new techs or new people how to actually create their own lab and everything. So I'm sorry it's a long video. I know it's a long video. I'm sorry about that. I apologize again for that. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, you see, like, I created the domain controller and everything. It's doing it right now. So. Still going. So, if you look, so like I said, you just literally, I move it aside for a second. Literally, you go into your console and you, you basically create the account and everything and um, you get started. AWS is, is absolutely free. You know, why not, why not do it, right? Take advantage of it. So, still installing. You gotta, you gotta give it a second. Like I said, it's one gig of RAM, you know, obviously one gig of RAM is... It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it should still work. So have patience with it. It's almost done. Almost done. Yeah, have patience with it. Yeah, so you see now it's completely done. Now it's gonna it should restart on its own. You don't even gotta do anything. Just leave it alone. There we go. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to come back up because it's it's um uh, to take a bit of time to come back up because obviously you know you just started installing a, a domain service and a domain DNS. So you have to give it a little bit of time. So don't don't do anything. Just wait it out a little bit. Um, and then when it when it's back up, it should look. You should see a bunch of stuff for um. Your uh, your domain services, your users of computers, and everything. So, let's give it a second. That's why I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for it to to fully come back up again. Just give it a second. So I'm I'm waiting. I mean, I could I could play around with it to see if it, let's see if it's back up already. Let's just double check. 
I don't think it's gonna be back up that quickly. If that patient is with it. Oh, look at that. Came back up. Hmm. Alright, good. It might give me an error message or something. It's my it, it might still be trying to come back up. I'm not sure. So just give it a second. Have patience with it. See, it's still thinking about it. Still thinking about it. Oh, there we go. Finally back up. There we go. Oh. It's, it gives you that message because it's still not... 100% up yet, so let's try it again. It should let you connect to it now. Now it should work. Either that or I have to wait a little longer than that. Just give it a second. Like I said, have patience with it. You know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work right away, so have patience with it. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's finally back up to the system. There we go. Yeah, that looks, that looks a lot better. There we go. Looks good. All right. So, yeah. So, you're basically, I, I installed domain name services, and you already know what I did. So, then your end result should look like this. So, you click on Windows Administration Tools. You should have everything here. So, you hit Active Users and Computers. Um, just give it a second. Like I said, it's a little slow. This is one gig of RAM. Have patience with it. And just give it a second. Should come back up with everything. Just have patience with it. There we go. And your end results should look like this. You should you should see your domain name service or your your DNS. Um, your domain controller should be right here, and then you can play around with it. So you could, you know, you could just create your own. You, you can create a new user account, um, whatever you want to do, and that's it. That's pretty much it. This video is an entry level video. It's for new techs that are trying to, you know, get their feet wet and trying to learn IT, or is trying to get into IT. So you saw what I did. You know, you just right click, you hit connect, and then you get the password, and then you, you know, you you put your your file in there. It gives you the password, and then you log in. So. That's about it for me for today. So this is an entry level video for new techs that are trying to get into, into IT. So if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. It shouldn't be that complicated. But um, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You know, let me know if this video is easy. Hopefully, it's not too complicated. And thank you for you guys for watching this video. And I hope you guys have a great Sunday. All right, take care. Peace later.